Hello everybody! In this video we will see how to create an Angular custom form element for HTML input fields. So, let's get started! First, let's see how the component HTML looks like. We have the form group with a myForm group instance here. We base on bootstrap classes, that's why we have here a margin 5. We also have div class form group and as we can see we also have the form control this is a very simple html form right the only thing that we have is a label and an input and of course we have the form control name input one let's have a look of how the code the source code looks like we have a form group with input one no more than this so how about now if we have a bigger form let's say that i have this could be the input to and also to have the input 3 input 4 something like this of course we need also to update the bindings here of the form control name and how to do this let's create input 2 input 3 and input 4 and of course let's change this as well input 2 here input 3 and input 4 and let's apply also the binding input 2 input 3 and input 4 this is our very very simple form let's go to the browser and see what we have this is what we currently have input 1, input 2, input 3 and input 4 in order to be 100% sure that the binding works correct, let's do the following. Let's create a pre-element here and I'm going to have the myForm.value with a pipe JSON. This is what we have, input 1, input 2, input 3, input 4 with null and if I start typing anything here, value 1, value 2, value 3 and value 4 it seems that we have a correct binding nice so let's face the problem the problem is that how about later on in our product we have a request from the UX UI or the product manager and we need to change something that has to do with how we have constructed our components Of course we have to apply this change four times in this very small example but if our example is very big it's hard to apply this in all the input fields the solution to this problem is to create a custom form control so how to do this what we're going to do is to create a new control generate a component and i will name it custom input this is a pure component and let's open this and inside here in the HTML we're going to paste this one, this code so this is our code this is how this component template would look like since this is a totally new component and we currently do not have any form group nor form controls I will delete this one and also we need the label to have it more dynamic so what I'm going to do is create an input here and I will name it like label and the type is string and have the exclamation mark here because it's strict and let's go again in the HTML and I'm going to interpolate the label inside the label element nice let's get this selector the app custom input and now let's go to the component html what i have to do is to replace all of this html code with my new component selector you remember we have also the label which is an input so i can just have here my input one like we have here right input one 
Let's do this four times. Input one, input two, input three, and input four. This is our first step of how to create a custom form input, a custom form component. So let's go to the browser and see what we have. Similar to the previous implementation, we have input one, input two, input three, and input four. How about now if I start typing here? Of course, the binding doesn't work well. Why? Because we didn't attach the form control name. So let's do this. I want this instance of the component to have the form control name input one, and then do the following on the other, on the second one, on the third, and also the last one. Nice. So let's have some spaces here. Let's go to the browser to see what we have. Hmm, something went wrong. Let's see the console. It says that no value accessor for form control with name input one. It seems that we need to have a value accessor. So this is what missing. We will go to the custom input component and we need to implement, apart from only need or any other hook, we need to implement also the control value accessor. And I will implement the interface and we have here some methods. We have the right value, we have the register on change, the register on touched, and that's all actually. These three methods, right value, register on change, and register on touched. Are we okay? So let's go to the browser and we still have the exact same problem. And the reasons why, why do we have? We have already implemented the control value accessor so why do we still see this error? So we have to tell Angular to use this particular component as a form component. So this one, we have to instruct Angular to use it like a form component. To do this, we have to declare the, a specific token and actually we have to provide a specific token. To do this, we will uh, add a providers and we're going to provide the ng value accessor token. So ng value accessor. So by registering this token, Angular will know that this particular component is part of form components. And we have to say that I use existing, provide the custom input component. And the question now is the following. Am I going to have this exact token more than one times? Yeah, definitely. We we'll use the ng value accessor many times and Angular use this token as well. So we have to be like, I will use this token more than once. Let's go to the browser to see what we have. It seems that we do not have any error. Nice. How about the binding though? If I start typing here anything, value one, we don't see the value one in the corresponding form control. Why is this? because we didn't implement any of these methods. So let's start with the right value. We use this method, we use the right value method to write a value from the form control instance to the native HTML control. And to do this, we will have like a value of type string. Let's have it like this. And as soon as we have any value from the form control instance, we want to provide this one to the scoped value. So this value equals to object. And of course, we have to use this one in the input like ng model equals to value. So what we have done currently is that we have applied a binding in the custom input component, in this input, and with this value. And if we go back to the custom input component, this is where it lives. Nice. Now let's go to the browser and see what we have. Again, if we start typing, we won't see any value. As we said previously, the right value, we we'll use this method to write a value from the form control instance to the native HTML control. 
let's go to the app component TS, which is the place that we have created our form group with the form control instances. And let's type here any value. So I will have here value one, and I will have just here value two. Let's go to the browser. Nice. So what we have done is that we provided this input from this form control to our custom form control. And we did this via the method write value. Excellent. How about now if we start typing? We need somehow to update the form control instance. We will use the register on change. We use this method to propagate a value from the native HTML control to the form control. As we can see, we have here a function. So we will use this function to be like on change. We will create another one. Which function type will accept a value of type string and returns nothing. And we will use this on change equals to function. As soon as we have done this, we have to use this method because this particular method would propagate the value from the HTML control to the form control instance. When to use it? Let's go to the custom input component HTML and we will use the ng model change and we will invoke the on change method with a dollar event. This means that any time we do any change in this input, this ng model change will fire an event. This is our handler, the on change, and this one will propagate the value from this component to the form control instance. Let's go to the browser and see how about if we delete this one. Nice, it seems that we have applied correct binding. If I type anything here, we can see that the binding works nice. Very good one. So this is how we apply a binding using a custom form control. Let's inspect this now. And let's reload. What we can see is that here we have the ng untouched, ng pristine and ng valid. ng untouched and ng pristine. And also we have the same class names here, ng untouched, ng pristine and ng valid. How about if I start typing? We can see that now the custom the custom one is dirty. Same here. The custom one seems to be untouched and same here. Let's now blur. And what we can see is that the custom one remains untouched. However, the native input field is touched. So we need also to propagate this event. We will use the last method, which is the register on touched. And we use this method to propagate the touched state from the native HTML control to the form control. Similar to on change, we will create the on touched. this on touched equals the function and we have to invoke the method which one not this one but we have to invoke the on touched method and the question is where do we have to invoke it on the blur event on touched as is let's go to the browser And let's have a look. So if I click and blur, what we can see here is that we have ng touched and the same here, ng touched. And this is how we create custom form controls that works perfectly with reactive forms and template driven forms. Oh, it seems that we have an error here. Let's inspect this one. What is about in the on untouched? Let's go on touched, let's go here. Ah, yeah, we have a value and we don't provide the value. And yeah, problem solved. 
Let's make sure that everything works fine. We still have the binding. And we still have the correct statuses. Nice. So, thanks for watching.